So when it comes to fasting, especially amongst the female population, there's a lot of questions that come up. Is fasting different for women? Should women fast? And as a male, I can only speak to my wife's and my daughter and clients' personal experiences. And of course, we don't have our daughter fast. It's summer vacation and we don't have camps this week, so she's working with dad. Do you like that? You want to be in the video, right? Okay. All right, so let's get into it. So we're going to talk about the results of a f over 1,400 open label observational study. And this was published by a German group at the Buchinger Clinic. I don't know much about this clinic, but uh, they do a lot of medical supervised fasts. So a few things that I want to clarify, because again, we hear on the internet all the time, fasting is different for women. Women shouldn't fast. Women have more complications with fasting. And I, again, everyone is, for the purposes of clarity, everyone needs to approach this in a personalized and individualized manner. You know, everyone's health history, everyone's past, everyone's goals are gonna be very unique and different. And let's just pause. I don't think everyone should fast, but I think a lot of people should have the resiliency to be able to at least go for a small period of time, maybe 12, 14, 16, 20 hours without food and, and have the life not fall and crumble apart. You know, I think no one should fast perpetuity, right? Obviously, no one, you know, fasting is not good for everyone, but the ability to have the metabolic flexibility to Go without food, I think, is a healthy thing. So let's get back to this. And what's interesting about this study, again, over 1,400 subjects, 60% of which, by the way, were women. 60% were women. So that's 841 female subjects. Let me just talk to you about the most commonly observed side effects, sleep issues and fatigue, in 14 and 13% of subjects, respectively. Let me say that again. The most common side effects of fasting between four and 21 days with sleep disturbances and fatigue in roughly 14 and 13% of the subjects. So keep that in mind. Let's also go down here to, um, to some of the other side effects here that I think is important to talk about. Dry mouth was, an, was one, and that was experienced in roughly 8% of the subjects. Uh, hunger was uh, a common side effect in 6% of the subjects. Uh, bad breath, probably as a result of the dry mouth in 5% of the subjects. Headache in 5% of the subjects. Muscle pain and so forth. Diarrhea was common, about 3% of the subjects. We need to explore this concept of iatrogenesis. Okay, so this has been talked about in many books. We hear about this in medicine where individuals are given a procedure or a drug and they experience a side effect. And so that's it's called iatrogenesis. So sometimes when we try to fix something, we do fix that thing we're trying to address, but then as a result, there's a side effect or a complication associated with that. That's iatrogenesis. And so with any methodology of anything, you want this space? There's iatrogenesis, even fasting, okay? So there is a side effect of going without food. Your mouth, you know, non-essential functions are going to be given less resources. And so you might get a headache, you might get dehydrated, you might get a dry mouth. So be aware of that. And for me personally, I find the sleep disturbance after day three is pretty profound. You might wonder why that is. That we've addressed in other videos, that's a hormonal changes. The adrenaline, the noradrenaline, the cortisol, the growth hormone, these so-called counter-regulatory hormones that help your body liberate more fat, convert those the fatty acids into ketones, and also improve gluconeogenesis do increase. So that, that is a part of the, the benefits of fasting, but also as the fast goes on, that affects sleep. So as we look through the other metabolic and possible immune changes that you might be uh, interested in knowing about, uh, leukocytes did decrease significantly in all groups in, in the fasted uh, study. And so, and they were uh, impacted, and these are white blood cells, these were impacted by the duration of the study. And I'll just overlay some screenshots here of other biomarkers that increased or decreased. And by the way, this paper is available open access, so I'll put links below. And so you can kind of see, and you know, it's interesting to consider some of the liver enzymes did increase. In some of these individuals, there was an increase in C-reactive protein. So again, does that mean that the norms are different in people that have been fasting. Is there other metabolic changes, maybe changes in albumin, other biomarkers, uh, blood hemodynamics and thickness? You know, it's, it's interesting because we don't have a lot of data in, in terms of blood levels and parameters in, in people that have been fasting for a prolonged period of time. So, and we keep that in mind. But I, I think, you know, in closing, we need to understand that both men and women like physiologically they should be able to fast 
That doesn't mean that all men or all women should fast. For example, my wife, very low body fat, she almost never does prolonged fasts. She doesn't promote prolonged fasts. She exercises a lot. She fasts daily, eating one meal a day. So it's more about that consistency and regularity for her. So I think it's important that you figure out what's going to work with your lifestyle and your health history and your future health goals. Is prolonged fasting going to get you there? Perhaps. Is regular, more consistent intermittent fasting and or time-restricted feeding going to be better for you? Perhaps. You need to try these different things on, see what's going to work and so forth. But again, the data from over 1,400 subjects, 60% of which, by the way, were female, shows that some of the side effects are you know, just related to sleep disturbances, dry mouth, a little fatigue. This is doable. Women can do it too, as can men. But you need to figure out what your health history are, what your goals are, and customize this to your lifestyle. So links are below to this paper, friends. If you want to download it, you want to share it with a friend or family member, you want to share this with someone that's skeptical about fasting. And you know, a lot of people are pretty wary of this, but we need to look back at the health history. Pythagoras, uh, fasting has been in the Bible. It's been used in this Islamic tradition. Fasting has been used for thousands of years by humans. So hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know your feedback on fasting, whether it's worked for you or not. I personally don't do prolonged fasting, but I fast, you know, uh, compress my feeding window every single day and fast one 24 hour period every week. So that's what I do. Would love to know what works for you. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so. That helps us. That helps you. So you get updated when we launch new videos like this or interviews with experts and we'll catch you on a future show down the road. See you later guys. Are we all done? All done. <laughs>